about Visa and I think MasterCard cutting Russia out, which has already now been replaced by uh, the Union Card, which will operate through Chinese banking. This is the shape of things to come, isn't it? Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, uh, this is is probably the most self-defeating U.S. policy of 2022. I, I, I say that, and there's a lot of self-defeating U.S. policies because um, right, they the West underestimate its own strength and they underestimate uh, the power of China because China definitely got Russia's back. China and Russia have been a long had a long standing friendship, stretched all the way to. Um, well, 19, at least 1989. A lot of people think China and Russia are still stuck in the Sino-Soviet split era. But that, that era ended in 1989 when Gorbachev visited uh, Beijing to meet up with Deng Xiaoping. And since then, China and Russia had excellent relationship. And China, there's, it's not in the interest of, interest of China to see Russia fall before the, the power of NATO because they, they know... They will be next if Russia Russia does fail, and and China now has the power to financially support uh, Russia. The the so Visa and Mastercard they're just essentially ceding grounds to the Chinese banking system at this moment. Yes, and ditto the SWIFT uh, canceling Russia's access to SWIFT, though not to the two accounts that deal with the import of oil and gas, although Russia has just closed the main pipeline to Germany, uh, by cutting Russia out of SWIFT, Russia and China swiftly did a deal that will allow Russia to use the clearance apparatus in China. Yeah, exactly. Uh, China actually created the SIP system, which is an uh, alternative to SWIFT in, back in 2015 in anticipation of U.S. using SWIFT as a financial weapon. Now, uh, SWIFT is one of the basis of U.S. dollar hegemony because, as we know, uh, U.S. dollar enjoyed the um, status of world currency since World War II because U.S. was the world's largest economy. And then in 1970, uh, 1970s, U.S. worked out a deal with Saudi Arabia to price the oil, uh, to price the oil in, the, in U.S. dollars and other oil producers follow suit. So this is what became known as petrodollar. This is a basis of, uh, you know, petrodollar and a financial strength is one of the pillars of the U.S. empire. And it's quite amazing to me now U.S. is sabotaging one of its own pillars of, of its own hegemony because um, now Russia will be forced to move off the dollar and and to settle its trade with China, one of its top uh, trading partner in yuan, and and this is just the beginning of an end for the dollar hegemony. Because uh, as of uh, earlier this this year, Russia's uh, Russia China trade only seventeen percent was settled in yuan, but now they're going to move all most of it in yuan, and this is just the beginning. I mean, Russia they they. U.S. did this to uh, to Iran early, a couple of years earlier, right? So, so we're going to see Russia, Iran, and pretty soon more people is going to switch off this SWIFT system because one of the reason for the dollar hegemony is because it's not only U.S. was the world's largest economy, uh, more uh, relatively stable, but because it's also relatively easy to use the system that's already in place. But now people will look at U.S. and, and see it uh, you know, at any moment if, if uh, their government uh, became, uh, became target of the U.S. government policy that they could be taken off the SWIFT system. So U.S. No longer, US dollar is no longer a, a safe haven currency. And more people are going to have their backup plans. And this is really... Uh, like I said, this is really the stupidest uh, U U.S. policy in the 2022 yet. Yeah, uh, although there's a long way to go in 2022, so we'll uh, we'll wait.